Thanks for watching Marillion's official YouTube channel. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification thingamajig so you're the first to know when we upload new content. Yes, I got presented with these uh, when I went to uh, Mexico City uh, at the beginning of 2019 for some concerts with my solo band. Yeah, if you can see, it's uh, all of us there. Made by a Mexican artist, given to me by uh, David uh, Velaquez. Uh, and I'd just like to say thank you to the artist for donating these from his personal collection. Um, yeah, great, great job. Um, really well. Mike keeps on sending me uh, Pro Tools sessions that I can uh, work on and, and listen to and uh, get my head around. And um, recently, like the last lot of jams we did, kind of, uh, I think, from November, December, January, February. Uh, and so we had some really great, really strong ideas. It's going to be one of those situations where we probably have enough to make two albums. So it will be then deciding which of those um, tracks make make the record um i think there'll be some obvious con contenders but you never know well it's been a bit stop start obviously um you know there was a big chunk of last year that i wasn't here in here because i was shielding uh, and the first part of this year once the uh, it became more dangerous again with the new variants of the of the virus that i uh, you know i stopped coming in so i mean in work again tomorrow for the first time since then. Um, so it has slowed the process down, but the way that Mike works through the jams anyway, and, and then we then come back to them, it probably hasn't lost us as much time as you would maybe think. Uh, and maybe it will be a stronger album because of it, having the extra time to sit back and, and uh, think about the ideas and, and explore them, maybe. Um, yeah, no, at times it's, it's frustrating. Um, there's something that just magical that happens when the five of us uh, are all tuned to the same creative radio station, for want of a better way of expressing it. Um, you know, that's just the way the ideas come out of nothing and then um, become something. So obviously, you know, they've been doing that without me, but uh, I like to think that I add something a little bit different when to that part of the creative process uh, but yeah no, I'm excited to start it again uh, I think having this enforced separation for what's a better word yeah it makes you think about what it is that you've got you know and how lucky you are um, and how special this band is um, you know the way that we interact together as people not just as musicians I think it's quite unique and it's a reason that we're still doing it after all these years Uh, well, well, we'll listen to the other jam ideas and, and see which of those uh, are the contenders, I suppose, for the A-list. Uh, and after choosing some of those, we'll probably start jamming them a bit more. Um, listen to the, the things that Mike's chopped together that we've developed a bit more. And decide which of those are, are working the best, if, if the things we can do to improve them. Um, it's just like a a steady and constant evolution really um, but what you need in this situation is a raw material you know you can't evolve something if all you've got is a load of tosh so you need you need to have strong ideas you can then work with um, and find a way to develop and put together and arrange and we've got that uh, now so we just need to to focus on that um, yeah exciting times Um, I think there's a different aspect maybe to some of my playing on, on this uh, album. You know, I, th I, I still listen to a lot of music, so, uh, and it's, it's funny, you know, you, you kind of you tend to listen to what your children are listening to, you know, not the children anymore, you know, your, your son and daughter in their 20s, but, um, so, if, like, say, for example, you're in the car and they want to play something from their phone and, you know, listening to, to like, a band like The Cure, who I'd never really listened to that much, but, 
you know, you get to hear things a few times and you think, oh yeah, that's a really cool approach. And maybe I'll find myself doing something on the guitar that has not exactly a direct reference to that, but some aspect um, of it. Uh, the way like a broken arpeggio kind of falls with a certain kind of sound. So, yeah, I, I, I think I'm, um, I'm still searching and developing um, different approaches, really. I, I don't feel like I'm, I've, I've burnt out or I'm static in, in, in the way I, I play, which is good. It's an exciting thing yeah, after so many years. Uh, to still be uh, excited about music and by playing the guitar and, and creating. <laughs> yeah, no, it, uh, Fugazi was, was the album really when I started using the JC120 and the Strat and the DS1 distortion pedal and it became kind of a mainstay of my sound all the way up to uh, the Anarachnophobia album probably. Uh, and then my sound evolved and I started using more valve amplification, the little groove tube stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, you, you're always you're always trying to f keep it fresh and interesting, and there's loads of different ways to get a great guitar sound. But it's it's like um, I don't know, having several great guitar sounds you can go between as opposed to just one is is the thing I find the most liberating. Uh, being able to do the same sort of thing on you know two or three different ways. Uh, because each sound will make you play differently as well, the same way that each guitar will make you play slightly differently, which is a perfect justification for when your wife says, do you really need another guitar? And the answer is always yes. Obviously, we, you know, we're still taking stock uh, of the impact of the pandemic uh, in terms of like long-term plans uh, and it's, it's just a little bit of hang, hanging around and waiting to a certain extent, you know. You, you, uh, I think it's been very frustrating for Lucy just to try and keep her momentum going when, when you just don't know, you know. It's like for all of us, this has kind of really been like the lost year. Um, and it was, I suppose, the only thing we're fortunate about is we weren't actually touring uh, last year at all, apart from, you know, the cruise to the edge that was supposed to happen. So it could have been a lot worse, but um, it still it leaves you a little bit in limbo. Um, so all we can really do is focus on making this a great album. Um, and then at some point we will tour with it. Uh, and obviously we've got the Marillion Weekend to look forward to the next year. Um, so yeah, it still feels like we've, we, we were on course for, I mean, who knows how many years it's going to take for this things to even return to a semblance of normality. But uh, I, I think the, we will get there eventually. Oh no, yeah, I miss, I miss um, being in Port Zealand. Um, I miss touring. Um, you know, I have great friends around the world. Um, and when you've toured for like 40 years, I think I said the other day on my Facebook page, you know, like some of these people, they're kind of like family to you, you know, they're, they're, and you haven't seen them for a long, long time. Uh, so it's, it's going to be quite emotional, I think, the next time we tour, the next time we do the, the Marillion Weekends and, and, and uh, Port Zealand. Um, yeah, it's going to be very different. Oh, God, I have no idea. I'd, I'd, that's the sort of question that you need to think about. Something that's a celebration for the fact that we've, we've all got through this, really. Um, yeah, and, and I know for a lot of people, you know, music is, is a very important part of that. Uh, and for me too, I mean, creating as well as listening to music. So, uh, yeah, it is just going to be so special. Thanks for watching Marillion's official YouTube channel. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification thingamajig so you're the first to know when we upload new content.